Das heutige Video beginnt mit einer Hydrationstabelle. Hast du genug Wasser getrunken? Versuche mindestens zehnmal am Tag durchsichtigen Urin zu haben. Ernähre dich hauptsächlich von Obst und Gemüse. Trinke einen Liter Wasser vor jeder Mahlzeit. Vielen Dank. So we've got a question from Facebook. Harley, can you please share your comments and criticisms about a blog recently who said a myths about eating meat or whatever? Okay, so who we always like to see who wrote the blog? Who wrote the blog? Often people use models, pictures of models, to pretend this is who I am. So what I like to do is go, who wrote the blog? Are they on steroids to get so lean and jack or whatever? So we've got to, who, it's like, who's writing it? Take advice and people get the results you desire, drug free. So I looked at uh, who wrote the blog, it's a guy called Chris Gunners. He's a med student personal trainer. Here's a picture of Chris. Now he's 10 years younger than me. He's 27, I'm almost 37. So this guy is a personal trainer. He's a personal trainer. And he's 27 years old and he's, he's an authentic. Authority on getting lean, but he's fucking fat. Doesn't make him a bad person. I'm just saying, from personal trainer to personal trainer, if someone's gonna say, I've got the answers to get lean, and they're fucking fat, doesn't make him a bad person, it just makes a confused person. That's all. So I don't hate this Chris guy, I just share my comments and criticisms. Because if you look at my face, you can see my jaw bones, you can see the leanness, you can see the starations in the muscle, you can see the veins, the vascularity. I'm not on any clean beauty, I don't take any steroids or whatever. I'm in Thailand right now. You can get steroids over the fucking counter. This guy's walking down the street, swole as motherfuckers, juiced, jacked, ripped, steroided up. Doing right, 100% natty bra. There's people on YouTube doing steroids, you know who I'm talking about. Often a symptom of steroids is you lose all your hair, especially if you're a white guy. Basically, you lose most of your hair, it gets very thin, very brittle. Again, just because you do steroids and lose your hair doesn't make you a bad person. If you're given bad nutrition advice, it does make you a bad person, but it is bad advice, and I want to share my comments and criticisms. So I don't hate this guy, just share my comments and criticisms. Not hating, just saying, nothing personal. Let's get to the, 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 the beef of the, uh, the debate here. So the blog was called Eight Ridiculous Myths About Meat Consumption and Health. First one, this guy says, meat rots in your colon isn't true. Well, I'll tell you what, look up putrescine, look up bowel cancer rates, in Australia, and we consume more grass-fed meat and dairy than anywhere on the planet per capita. Why? Because we produce the most grass-fed meat and dairy, because Australia is so fucking big, our population is so small, we've got heaps of land, and that's why Australia is so fucked up, is because we cut down all the trees, or most 95% of the trees, and planted cows. That's why the average Aussie is fat, sick, and nearly dead. Here's a picture of the average Australian family and what they eat. Look at all that meat. Grass-fed meat. The carbohydrate intake is so low, I could eat a family's, this family's carbohydrate intake, I could eat that in two or three days. Lean during order. Cars make you fucking lean. Here's a picture of a family from Africa, I think Kenya. Where's the meat? Where's the fat? That's why you can't, that's why they're lean. Look at the girl in the orange, she looks like she's a fucking, ready for the catwalk model. She ain't starving. They ain't starving. All they can afford is grains, carbohydrates. This blogger says cars make you fat. Does meat rot in your colon? Yes, it does. It contains putrescine and endotoxin. Meat equals colon cancer. Look it up. Uh, the second thing is meat in, is high in saturated fat and cholesterol. So this guy is saying that cholesterol doesn't matter. And then he's saying that if you eat a high carb diet, it raises your cholesterol. So they're saying that cholesterol doesn't matter. High cholesterol is safe. And then they, in the next blogger says so a high carb diet can raise your cholesterol. That's bad. The cholesterol doesn't matter last week. This week it does because I'm promoting a different diet. It's just all bullshit. Hey, I'll tell you what, look up Ansel Keys. Look up, this is, talk of any fucking cardiologist who's got integrity and ethics. Hey, doc, I want to eat bacon, eggs for breakfast, lunch and dinner and steak and just have fat, 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 500 grams of fat a day. Kilo of fat a day. What's the fucking cardiologist going to say to you? Dude, you're going to block your arteries, you're going to give yourself a fucking... Heart disease, heart attack. The average heart, uh, the average heart attack in Australia costs the taxpayer two hundred and eighty thousand dollars, approximately US two hundred eighty thousand dollars for every heart attack in Australia. Our biggest export is grass-fed beef. K 
cardiologists in Australia are fucking loaded. In the US, it cost their taxpayers about $460 billion on heart disease. There must be a lot of fucking fruitarians in the US I don't know about. So, you know, but this guy's saying, oh, but like saturated fat's good, you know. His bottom line is, is, is it's true that meat tends to be high in saturated fat and cholesterol, but this is not the cause for concern because they do not have adverse effects on blood cholesterol or increase of heart disease. So eat as much, clog your arteries with saturated fat, and if you get a heart attack, it's because of the organic peaches you ate last summer. What a fucking joke. Number three, meat causes heart disease and type 2 diabetes. So this guy is saying a high fat diet is good for heart disease and diabetes. Here's a book, fucking read it, please. Stop wasting our fucking time with these bullshit blogs. You're killing people with your advice, man. Seriously. Delusional. You're just training in medical? A medical student, you're training in med? Fuck, man. Look up Dr. McDougall, Dr. Esselstein, Dr. Neil Barnard. Get an education, son. It's nonsense. Uh, number four, red meat causes cancer. Look it up. Red meat causes cancer. Don't trust some little blogger who's overweight and calls himself a personal trainer. Meat is full of heterocyclic amines and uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Is true. He says these things are good for you. He says heterocyclic amines are healthy for humans. It doesn't matter about them. What a fucking joker. Have you ever heard of endotoxins? Point five. I'm getting hyped up on this one. Humans are naturally herbivores and not designed for meat consumption. He says that's not true. He says we're designed to eat meat. Why the fuck then, when you walk down the street, you don't jump on a dog and eat it? Why do, when you walk down the street and you see a peach tree, you jump on a peach and eat it? Why is that? Why is it illegal to eat a dog in the US on the street, or anywhere pretty much for that matter? Even in China where they eat dogs, where I've been there, if you walk, walk down the street and just grabbed a dog and <laughs> bit into it, they'd probably lock you up. If you walk down the street and there was a peach tree and you grabbed the peach off the tree and ate it, you could probably pick up girls doing that, couldn't you? So the whole thing, oh, we're not designed to eat just plants, like we're designed to eat meat. <laughs> Here's a comparative anatomy chart. Get educated, mate. Next point he, he tries to make, he says that a high-protein diet is healthy for your bones. That's why the Eskimos had chronic osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. Look at the skeletons they pulled up. Look at the skeletons and, and bodies they had that were frozen from four or five hundred years ago. The Eskimos had heart disease, breast cancer, and chronic osteoporosis. The main death, cause of death at such a young age of about 28, the Eskimos average age, 28, 28, that's one year older than you, mate, and you're telling us this diet's healthy. The, the, the cause of death was chronic osteoporosis. The bones just, just broke, crippled, crippled themselves. So there you go. That's, and that's the old frozen examples. It's not like 2014 example. That's the old stuff before the bad diet came in. So, And look at Australia. We consume so much meat and dairy, grass-fed. We've got the highest rates, one of the highest rates of osteoporosis, colon cancer, heart disease, obesity, stroke, impotence. Impotence, Australians are fucking guzzling Viagra. Even in Bangkok here, I saw a guy down the street had a fucking bit of chicken in his hand, had a fucking Viagra pill. Literally yesterday, I was walking past another plaza doing a video of the Lady Boys. This guy had a fucking blue Viagra pill in his hand. He's, he's waving it to his mates and going, I dare you, I dare you. And he's holding some chicken in his hand. You fucking wish I had my iPod to film that shit. So there you go. Um, he's got another one that says meat is necessary. Uh, it says that uh, he doesn't. Even, he doesn't. He can't even make a point there. He says that there's many nutrients in there that are important for optimal health. Here's the fact, Chris. There's not a single nutrient in animal products, in dead meat, in roadkill that we need to consume from those animal products that we can't manufacture ourselves or obtain from plant sources including Viagra. Think about it. Last point, meat makes you fat. Well, I think it does, man, because look at you. You're 10 years younger than me. Where are you going to be in 10 years' time? You're going to be as lean a rider? I don't know. Vascularity? Fucking shredded, man. I don't starve. I eat all I want. I eat all I want. And when I was doing the paleo diet like you recommended, I did a dump once every two weeks. It makes you all bloated and stinky. It, meat does rot in your gut. Smell the toilet after a meat eater, man. It's like, it's like a dog did a turd. Smell dog turd, smell horse turd. Big difference. 
So that's more comments and criticisms. Again, people love these, uh, you know, and <laughs> people love people love reading good things about their bad habits. But I always like to look at the person who wrote it. Would you take advice from them? If you want to get lean, like a Kenyan, like a Kenyan, what the Kenyans eat, we just showed that before. If you want to get lean like Freely, or a lot of girls are like, I always want to get lean. I want to get slim. I want to fit into that tight black dress. Look like a Thai lady boy. I want to get lean. What are you going to eat? You're going to eat fucking Dr. Atkins diet? Dr. Atkins died 258 pounds. Look at Lauren Cordain in his 50s or 60s. Obese, overweight. Couldn't run around the block. Couldn't even catch a fucking mouse with four broken legs. But he says the caveman diet is optimum for physical performance and getting lean. Lauren Cordain, you're overweight, you're out of shape. How come if your diet's so good? How does that fucking work? I don't know. So you've got this 27-year-old guy, Chris, not hating, just saying. He's overweight. He's tubby. He's already like getting premature balding from his diet. It ain't healthy. It doesn't make anyone a bad person, but I'm just saying. Just saying. If you want to get lean, eat like lean cultures. Kenyans, Asians, lots of carbs, lots of fruit. Get rid of the animal products. There's 7 billion people in the world today. It ain't ethical to eat animal products. It ain't ethical to cut down trees to plant cows or to cut down trees to grow more soy and corn 80% of the grains produced in the world are grown to feed livestock. And then there's the whole grass feed issue where you've got to have 10 fucking planets to feed everyone the paleo diet. 10 planets. 